When working in the field of audio, whether in your home studio or a large commercial facility, you're likely to encounter a mixing console. Whether referred to as a mixing console, recording console, mixing desk, soundboard, or simply just a mixer, all refer to the same thing. For consistency, we'll use the term console throughout this tutorial. From recording studios to radio, television, PA, and film and post-production, consoles are used to amplify, attenuate, balance, root, combine, and control tone and dynamics of an audio signal. In the world of professional audio, consoles can be a crucial part of the process. They allow you to monitor multiple mic and line signals in one ergonomic solution. This tutorial will teach you about console signal flow and how to use a console to get the signal from your mic to your DAW and from your DAW back to your console. There are two main sections of a mixing console, the channel strips and the center section, also known as the master section on smaller consoles. The channel strips are input channels of the console and are usually mono. Channel strips in their simplest form generally feature a mic pre or line trip. You can get basic EQ, sometimes as simple as a two-band low and high frequency booster cut, a left and right pan pot, solos, mutes, and a channel fader. Sometimes on smaller consoles, the fader is replaced by a pot to save cost and space. More complex and expensive designs may include extensive EQ and dynamics options, insert switches, subgroup busing, effect sense, and a meter bridge at the very top of the console. On the back of the console's channel input area, you can usually find an XLR socket for the mic prees, line input jacks, insert send and return sockets, and sometimes a direct output. A console center section or master section is where you'll find the console's master controls. Controls such as the master fader, subgroup masters, monitor controls, and extra inputs for additional stereo sources such as CD players, iPods, DVD players, or reference mixes from your DAW. The master fader is the fader that controls the main output level of the console's mix bus. The subgroup outputs and their controls can also be found in the master section. Subgroups are used to merge various channels as an additional level control before the master fader. Typical use would be to group similar instruments to one fader once a balance has been achieved on the individual channel faders. A console would usually have some type of routing matrix or subgroup routing switches on each channel. On some consoles, the subgroups have dedicated outputs and can be used as a way to control and choose which channels are sent to your recording device. Another important part of a console is the monitor section. This is where the level of your monitors is controlled. You can also use this section to choose which source signal is feeding the input of your monitors. The monitor section usually includes headphone cue outputs as well. Auxiliary, or aux sends, split the incoming signal allowing you to route to an auxiliary bus. This is for use with external processing devices. Aux sends are usually mono and can either be pre-fader or post-fader. The level of a pre-fader send is set by the aux send control. Post-fader sends also depend on the position of the channel fader. Aux sends are normally used to send signals to external processors such as delays and reverbs. These processors' outputs can either be returned back through another channel or dedicated effects returns on the console. External effects units normally receive a post-fader signal. When using effects sends as headphone cues, you would usually set the aux send to pre-fader in order to have an independent mix for the musicians. Some mixers have dedicated aux sends for the headphone cues. These are called cue sends and are normally stereo. Having stereo cue sends is beneficial because it allows you to further customize the artist's headphone mixes by allowing you to pan your signal left or right. Inserts are access points that are built into a console. They allow you to add line level external processing devices to the console signal path. You can usually find insert points on each channel, mix bus, or subgroup channels. Insert points can be balanced or unbalanced. Some consoles use a single TRS insert point as a send and return. This type of connection is unbalanced due to the TRS jack having to share only three conductor points for both lines as opposed to two conductor points per line with a balance jack. The TRS jack insert typically uses the tip as the send and the ring as the return. Some setups have the tip as the return and the ring as the send. High-end consoles generally have discrete insert, send, and returns. 
This allows for balanced connections and can be supplied via D sub connectors, XLRs, or jacks. Insert points are often normalized, which means the circuit allows signal to pass through the channel as normal without anything having to be patched into the send and return points. This normal mode of operation is interrupted when a jack plug is plugged into the insert socket. When your console has individual send and return sockets, the signal will only be interrupted by plugging a connector into the insert return. The insert send in this setup will still send a signal without interrupting the normal operation of the circuit.